Good evening uh, to all those who are attending this. Uh, this is our third webinar since the lockdown. Uh, and for today's uh, webinar, we've had an overwhelming response. Uh, about 600 people have registered for this. And I think uh, during the course of the next few minutes, we expect uh, more and more. So currently, I can see about 165 people are already online. And I suspect uh, we'll see uh, a large number joining in the next few minutes. Uh, today's topic is very timely uh, for multiple reasons. One is we are living in this uh, pandemic, uh, COVID-19. The second is that the all IITs, and I probably should say almost every single of the 23 campuses are doing something about it in some shape and form, uh, and uh, contributing to mitigating the difficulties that have been created by COVID-19. Uh, we could not possibly have 23 directors, so we had to make a choice. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have uh, four of them here today. Uh, the, uh, the format is going to be very simple. Each one speaks for 15 minutes. There's a five minute for Q&A. Uh, and then we switch to the next. Uh, those who are listening and watching this, uh, if you have questions, there's a button at the bottom of your screen called Q&A. So please type your questions there. And Professor Mishra will be you know, the moderator and he will ask those questions of the uh, respective directors here. Uh, this show is brought to you by the IIT Alumni Center, Bangalore. Uh, many of you who live in Bangalore have heard of us. Uh, some of you may not be members, so we would urge you to become members. Visit our website, iitacb.org. You'll see all the work that we do. And, uh, you know, the more of this that we do, uh, the stronger the bonds between the alumni and the IITs. And we can grow this uh, uh, in the near future. With that, I'm going to hand over to Professor Mishra for him to start the process rolling. Professor Mishra. So good evening to uh, all the panelists uh, and good evening to all the participants who are taking um, part in this uh, webinar. Um, as Ashok uh, Kamat mentioned, this is our third webinar and we have a very uh, powerful panel and a very exciting uh, program uh, that we look forward to today evening. Uh, we have directors of four IITs. We have Professor Ram Gopal Rao, uh, Director of IIT Delhi. Professor Sovashish Chaudhary, Director of IIT Bombay. Uh, Professor Sita Ram, uh, of, uh, Director of IIT Guwahati and Professor Sarit Das, uh, the youngest of these four IITs, uh, uh, IIT Roper. And all of them have been in the news, uh, so we thought uh, it would be nice for uh, the general community, especially the IIT alumni and friends of IIT, to know what is going on. Uh, many IITs are doing uh, work to mitigate the COVID-19 um, pandemic uh, in terms of diagnostics and uh, you know, vaccines and, and all kinds of things you'll hear about it. So in a way, these IITs are contributing to the nation as I see it. Uh, and hopefully some of these things will go to the world, so contributing to the world. So without any further ado, we'll uh, start. Uh, for the participants, please keep your questions because I have to read it. I am not going to read the whole question, so keep it short and crisp so that I can ask the panelists. So we'll start with uh, uh, Professor Ram Gopal Rao of IIT Delhi. He'll speak for 15 minutes. Each director will speak for 15 minutes, five minutes for Q&A to that particular director, okay? To that particular. And at the end, we'll have about 10, 15 minutes for general question answers. So please don't ask a question of IIT Bombay to after IIT Delhi finishes or IIT Guwahati after IIT Delhi finishes. So with this, Ram Gopal, it's your... Yeah, thank you, Professor Mishra. Thanks for organizing this. Good evening to all of you. We're all very happy to be participating on this IIT ACB plus platform. In fact, for IITs, when it came to COVID, all of this was so sudden. Nobody had planned uh, anything. And uh, But I think I would call it, it is also a kind of a self-discovery moment for us uh, and also a disruption. I think uh, these are the two things I would... Uh, these are the two terms I would use to classify what exactly is happening in the IITs. In fact, I was also recently looking at a, 
a compilation of projects in all IITs. All IITs in the last couple of months alone started over 200 projects all around COVID. And many of them through the startups which are there on the campus or which have graduated out of these campuses. So many of these technologies are now available in the market. One can go and buy these technologies which are developed in IITs. And I think that is a self discovery moment for all of us because even I did not realize the depth of research at IIT Delhi when all of this started. So when we closed down in the in the early March and one while I was sending that to all the students and faculty, I also said that anyone working in the areas related to COVID can stay back. Institute will make all the arrangements for their laboratories to be opened and for them to you know, stay on the campus and all of that. So I encourage students and faculty working in the COVID areas to stay back. And we also said that, you know, since uh, your funding requirements now will be difficult to meet from external agencies, you can submit a small pr proposal to Institute and Institute would fund you 10 lakhs, 20 lakhs kind of a money to, for the consumables and other things. So, so with that uh, arrangement, we, we did the lockdown. And I was surprised to see over 20 projects at IIT Delhi, which got initiated all around COVID. For example, there is a good group in the Kusuma School of Biosciences at IIT Delhi. They were working on viral, uh, virus-related uh, kind of research for almost like 20 years. And when the COVID came in, they said, we would like to now start working on the COVID. And for almost like three months, they, they worked day and night on COVID. And that is the result of that. You see now a, a very low-cost uh, uh, detection assay uh, detection system for, for COVID-19 at IIT Delhi, which has got ICMR approval. And once the ICMR approvals were there, we received more than 40 expressions of interest, including all the large pharma companies which wanted to take this up and take it to market. And we said we will follow a open license policy because we said instead of giving it to one company and all of that, we said we will give a non-exclusive license to any company which meets certain requirements certain quality requirements, certain background requirements. So uh, with that arrangement, we already, yesterday we signed an agreement with four companies and now we are, we are giving it to many more companies which are meeting that criteria. So now they all said that in three weeks time, this uh, detection assay will be in the market and the cost will be around 500 rupees. It can be anywhere from 300 to uh, you know, 600 rupees depending on the, the final uh, way it gets into the market. So now it will be a very low cost detection assay 100% accurate as uh, certified by ICMR, 100% sensitive. Within, within a day or two after somebody uh, becomes COVID positive, you can actually detect the virus using this system because it is RT-PCR based and supposed to be very accurate. And that uh, was a uh, you know great moment for us and, and it has also uh, got the necessary attention as, as it uh, deserves. In addition to that, we have a very good textile department and the textile department, every fifth faculty member in the textile department has their own startup. For example, there is this very first startup from IIT Delhi, the nasal filters. For air pollution, they were working on filters which you can stick to your nose and which, uh, which cuts down the pollutions to down to 99% kind of a thing. They, with a little bit of modification, get in, got into the market of PPEs. Now they have set up a, a kind of a manufacturing plan which is able to produce one lakh masks per day in the in uh, in the Delhi and CR region. Now they are also setting up a plant where they are able to manufacture thirty thousand N95 masks per day. So that is a kind of a ramp up they have been able to achieve in a matter of a month. And uh, I should also give all credit to government agencies because when we wanted to do all of this, there were approvals required. There were all the permissions required to open you know, some of these factories and all that. Government came forward and we took it up took it up at the highest level. MHRD was also very supportive of that. So now we are able to produce all of these masks and all that. And around that time, we also said IIT Delhi has an excellent uh, high performance computational facility with about two petaflops uh, kind of a uh, uh, capacity. And we said uh, any COVID related project which requires modeling and the HPC uh, sort of requirements can write a proposal to us and we will make it available for free. So we received again almost like 15 proposals for use of HPC for COVID related projects. We approved nine of them. Now there are nine new projects which have got started at IIT Delhi, which are not from IIT Delhi faculty, but from faculty members all over the country. So that is another thing uh, that has also, uh, also happened. And there are many other things that are happening. There are people working on 
on the drugs now for uh, for covid and uh, there are people in fact at iit delhi we were facing a huge problem with sanitizers the hand sanitizers i casually told our chemistry department you know why are you why can't we just make it in house we need to struggle for getting these sanitizers and within uh, about 48 hours they prepared 50 liters of hand sanitizers meeting the who uh, standards and we made available that entire recipe to whoever wanted for free of cost and in iit delhi now we are using the hand sanitizer which is internally developed and that again uh, we are now supplying that recipe to anyone who who needs that so i think these are this is a kind of a self discovery moment and uh, so there is lot of research that has been happening and we saw covid as an opportunity as an as an, an opportunity mm-hmm. to get something into the market to make an impact i told my faculty members a simple thing you know one year from now when you look back if somebody asks what has iit delhi done you know which has made an impact in fighting covid in the country we should be able to list out at least five things that we have done so we have kept that in mind very consciously and we are working towards getting these things into market i think you know, getting some media attention all that is one thing but at the end of the day what has reached the society what is that that people are using is a is a major requirement and that is definitely something which is, which is happening and i am very happy about it the disruption moment i i talked about now this has broken the barriers for uh, for all online kind of programs now until now you tell a faculty member to do a live session for students there is a lot of resistance you know why you know how and all of these kind of questions so we had no choice we just had to you know convert uh, 600 of our courses which are running this semester to an online kind of a format and we again had some initial teething troubles but now there are a large number of courses at least 400 courses which are running online and that i see is a is a major disruption that has happened to the way we 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 conduct uh, the teaching learning kind of things on the campus and now uh, you know i think uh, otherwise if you ask me in the last 50 years what is the technology that has become all pervasive in our academic institutions not only in india but anywhere in the world i can tell you with enough confidence other than powerpoint you know nothing else actually changed in the way we we teach in our classrooms but now thanks to covid now we are able to uh, reach out to people through these online programs it i believe we are working on a on a on a kind of a platform now where we want to launch some certificate programs in uh, in areas like ai ml data sciences sort of areas which are in heavy in in, in great demand and where we would like to have 10000 people take these courses now the iit model always has been conduct the world's toughest examinations get a few people inside and give them degrees and then they leave but now the we are just turning it around we are saying that now anybody can take iit courses we will not look at the past background history and all of that but to get out of the thing you need to have a have an examination pass if you can pass that examination which iit sets you get a certificate from iit delhi so we are now launching some of these major certificate programs it's actually going to senate in our next senate meeting because internally it has all been approved but for this iit alone cannot do that so we are for the first time we are joining hands with private players now we have got expressions of interest from at least 8 uh, or 10 uh, private companies now which are in the education space and they will provide all the back end support for running these program the job of a faculty member is to just go there deliver those lectures the tutorials the exams all that component will be taken care of by these by the service provider educational companies and and now under that we want to reach out to you know the tens of thousands of people i think that is our target now so i think uh, wouldn't it would have happened eventually maybe 4 years down the line or 5 years down the line but but because of what we are seeing right now i can tell you in the next 6 months we will see multiple iit delhi programs which are online you know where iit delhi will issue a certificate i think i think this is these are the kinds of uh, the the self discovery and disruption that has happened in our institutions and uh, i think uh, you know things are fine i think i i am very confident that uh, you know this uh, will make us more confident as we move forward even the governments have realized the importance of science now and i am pretty sure now funding for science somebody goes to government they will not ask the question why do you need science kind of thing i think i think even that uh, kind of a uh, thing has happened in the awareness has happened in the in the government system i think uh, you know overall uh, things should look very different the post uh, post covid kind of an era thank you uh thank you uh, amgopal a uh, couple of questions which uh, have cropped up 
is um, can you share the formula for the uh, hand sanitizer and uh, disinfectant with the public? Yeah, yeah it's great. I actually shared it on the LinkedIn. If somebody can just send me any message on one of these online platforms, I can share it. Perfect. Good. Uh, what is the role of IoT in tackling COVID? You mentioned about it a little bit. What is the research scope of IoT based solutions for this sort of a pandemic? Because the way I look at it, it some other pandemic may come later. So we need to develop um, IoT solutions. I think IoT is a, the, the Internet of Things sort of a thing is a platform where if I have the sensing platform, I can always connect it and uh, I can make it uh, networked and all of that. So that part can be done. But COVID detection requires you know, assays. COVID detection requires very deep science to, to detect this virus, whether it is antibody kind of a test or whether it is RNA-based kind of a test. I think that science part is the most challenging part of it. And now that we have overcome that barrier, now that these kits are going to be out in the market in about three weeks' time. In fact, in three weeks' time, all these companies to whom we are giving non-exclusive licenses will be able to launch this kit our target is to introduce a million kits in the country so that this testing problem will go away. The low cost testing will make all the kind of a difference and connecting them using an IOT platform and understanding who are the people who are positive, who are the people who are negative and who are, who are, who are, who don't have the COVID kind of a thing. And then linking to the government of India, even the app that government has put out. I think these things can be done. I think for electrical mm -hmm. and computer science engineers, those will be fine. Uh, will, will be can be taken care of easily, but that will happen. I think linking these uh, detection uh, results to the the the, uh, the kind of uh, apps that government of India has launched, I think that can help. Uh, that way, the IoT can help. Uh, you know, capturing all of this. Can you comment on? Um, and I don't know how to ask this question, but I think this is what it is. Uh, can you comment on the accuracy of uh, the detection kits? How accurate? How do you say that they are accurate? They will work. Uh, These are all ICMR. ICMR, yeah. ICMR report is available uh, on their website. Yeah. ICMR has said uh, they have done large number of uh, samples using yeah. this uh, using our okay. test. Uh, hundred percent accuracy. Uh, it has okay. not failed I even. And good thing about RTPR or the PCR based systems is accuracy. But the bad thing is the cost. The way we have been able to reduce the cost is this is a probe free assay. The, the fluorescent stacks that uh, all the PCR systems use, they are the most expensive components of the entire assay. And these uh, probes are, are custom, they are imported, and they are in heavy demand right now because everybody needs those probes. And that is what is making the RT-PCR test uh, very expensive. In our case, we are not using the fluorescent uh, probe, which is the custom-made probe. So our cost of uh, the bill of materials has come down very drastically. In fact, I was uh, looking at their data the bill of materials is like 200 rupees. In 200 rupees, they can today do a test which is 100% accurate using the PCR. And now with all the other technologies and other yeah. things that go in, I would expect it to be 500 or 600 rupees and not more than that. Thank you so much. And one last question. Is, uh, uh, is any work going on uh, by st statistics people to, you know, uh, lots of reports come that numbers are doubling this, that and the other. Are these all accurate or are st statics people are involved in it? OIT Delhi has uh, launched uh, uh, an online portal now. In fact, if you go to the IIT Delhi website, whatever projects I have mentioned, over 20 projects, which I briefly touched upon uh, a few of them, they are, all this information is available on the IIT Delhi okay. webpage. You just need to go to the IIT Delhi webpage. We have a link there for all the ongoing projects in the input. We have from IIT Delhi, we are maintaining a panel right now. So where we are capturing all the data that is happening in the country using advanced algorithms, we are actually doing the predictions now. We have done it district wise and it's getting created every week. In fact, there is a demand now for uh, for making it every day. We are even putting together uh, some, uh, some ways of doing that. But right now, every week we are updating based on whatever data is available. So we are uh, now capturing the entire country's COVID data using a, an online portal that we have built uh, at IIT Delhi. That information is also there online and even on my LinkedIn pages, I have shared that information. So you can click on your district, 
and you will know how covid is spreading how many people are there and, and what exactly is happening based on a very advanced kind of a modeling another thing which is also happening is ai ml based technologies there is a group here which is working on use of x ray data for for the, for the diagnosis of covid and just today morning i have written at least letters to multiple hospitals in delhi asking for more data the x ray data of covid patients using that uh, there is a there are a group here which is working on the detection uh, methodologies you know once we have enough data we should even be able to perfect that so that's another project which is going on uh, at iit delhi right now okay uh, one more question we have a minute with you uh, more so we can do it uh, there are several questions so we can't take them all but can private companies help it be in the r and d program are they helping or uh, what is your outreach in, in that sense that's a very good question in fact i'm i'm very happy with the way the, the the industry is coming forward the corporates are coming forward we have received uh, at least from four industries now they the, the funds through their corporate social responsibility and we are talking to at least another half a dozen industries now for for a variety of projects and many of them want to start want to support the startups some of them want to support the test kits that we have developed so that the cost can be kept low so that in fact industry is, is definitely playing a very proactive role in our research right now i am i am uh, very happy to say that you know there are at least half a dozen funding uh, for funds that we have uh, i mean half a dozen industries which have come forward and given us funds but we are also talking to multiple industries now for taking of these activities forward i think even the principal scientific advisor's office dr vijay raghavan his office has also played a very proactive role of that they are connecting institutions to corporates we have a dean of corporate relations and he is also working very closely with the corporates uh, i think you know that part is happening uh, pretty well too thank you so much uh, so much exciting work going on and i am sure lots of work ahead for you also will keep you busy uh, new opportunities and new research uh, out outcome will come it will help a lot of people in the future um thank you so much uh, we now thank switch you. over to uh, professor subhashi choudhary to tell us what's happening in iit bombay okay thank you professor mishra uh, good evening to all the uh, people here you know in a virtual world uh it's a real pleasure to be talking to you so let me put up i think i would request uh mr kamat to put up some uh slides that i prepared for this so that i could be more coherent in my talk uh can 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 you please share the powerpoint okay i'm just getting it up okay so uh, let's again uh, as professor ramgopal rao said that this was like all on a sudden and uh, unlike iit uh, uh, i think delhi we did not keep anybody in the campus so that's there is a big difference so please go to the next page so this is how we are fighting covid 19 so the basic facts are all students were sent home by march 20th that was the last day when the students were there only like 70 or 80 of them are in the campus all labs classrooms hostels they are closed now current semester on pause and in between we declare summer vacation so the summer semester is running now so for people so that they can make up and the key thing right now that we have to realize when we say that what we all are doing is that there is absolutely no student support for any research activity currently because uh, those who need real lab support they are not here in the campus okay next one please now when you talk about the fighting against covid there are actually there are three aspects to any kind of fighting like this one is of course the preventing part so which is like a first step in fighting and uh, this is where i think majority of the focus is because it can be developed quickly and but the bulk is required and we have more options to do this one on the other hand the next thing which is very important for all of us is actually the curative part okay where usually you have a long gestation period you have a strict procedures and the protocols to be followed and this is required like supposing it comes back so uh this is where uh, you know you start the thing but you don't see the result right now it will take longer so i'll be talking mostly about the preventive part little bit of activities that we have picked up on the curative things 
But of course, for the third component for any medical issue is palliative, which is not applicable for COVID-19. So we don't have to talk about that. So the next one is that, please, next page. Yeah. Now, yeah, uh, next page, please. Yeah, so the, one of the quickest thing, and I'm not talking about the mask or uh, the kind of uh, sanitizers that we prepared here, because I'm not talking about more for the people from outside to take it up. Like for example, we provide a design, okay, so that very quickly somebody can take it up. Like for example, you see certain things like how the face shields have to be designed so that you can be done very quickly and they're very safe and low cost. And hospitals, like supposing you are checking, particularly when you're picking up swabs and all, these are actually dangerous for the people, for the health patient, I mean, uh, the worker. So some kind of an aerosol box to contain all those. And the third thing is that, you know, if you are using PPE, for many of them, we did not have enough at the beginning. So we said, okay, can you be one other? So all this, actually you made it and gave it to others so that they can actually start producing. So the next one, now, uh, one of the common thing, you know, people talk about, uh, you know, the killing the antivirus, you know, the virus, but what about so many things we just can't get rid of it? Like, for example, your wallet, anything else that, you know, you are touching outside. So we actually got some inf disinfection chamber designed here and it has been actually tested. Of course, we don't have access to the actual coronavirus, but we got it done with Escheria coli, MS2, Fage. And we found that actually they do very well and actually we could kill the, you know, this thing without damaging even your mobile phone. I know like something like this, it has like thousands of, you know, bacteria and virus. So the question is that how do you get it disinfected? So we got it done. So this is also have been done. Next is that, uh, next, yeah. Now there is another thing, you know, if you realize that at the beginning people are talking about like a shower through, you know, chamber through each you, pass through for disinfecting somebody as you you know it's like a tunnel but these are actually uh, not safe and actually the health authorities say that this should not be used so we started working on something different it is called phytoformulations for walk through sanitizers so these are mostly what it means are herbal based and these are uh, the, they don't use chlorates or anything and we have the patents file, everything formulation ready. It has some approval of grass, something, some agency that you need. And this is actually ready. We are looking for certain companies to pick it up so that if you really want to do large scale kind of uh, walk through sanitization of certain uh, thing, people, then it can be done. Okay. Uh, next one. That uh, there is another one. It's very well known that uh, if you have certain special nanoparticles like silver and others, then they have antiviral uh, kind of properties. So we have actually been developing something where you can use, uh, you know, you can have very little bit of spraying of these nanoparticles on surfaces and you can kill all these uh, viruses. So we have actually had tests and we found that within two hours of spraying, you don't, have, don't need anything else. Actually, it killed almost all the, you know, like a very high accuracy, you know, you can kill most of the virus, okay? But of course, we must say that this, we could not do it for the coronavirus because we did not have the permission to work on that. So these are all like other kind of things that we have. Next one, please. Now, there are other things because one aspect is the ventilator, you know, the CPAP machines. So some of our people in mechanical engineering and other, what they are doing is that some uh, development in like the first one on the left, you see that the CPAP helmet. So we can just put the CPAP helmet on the top of that, something like this. So it is prototype has been developed. So they are looking for all the verifications now. Uh, Ambu bag. So this is another one when you actually take people there on the, you know, so you put them on a bag and so that, uh, you know, it doesn't let out any of your, um, you know, the virus at the same time, it maintains certain pressure inside. And of course, the fi finally, the ventilator. So all these designs are being done. So ventilator, I would say like 70% like is done, but still it has to go through some more processes before it can be actually released. Uh, next one, please. Next, yeah. 
Now, this is another one. We have BATIC in our campus, which is a biomedical instrumentation and uh, the innovation center, where they have already come up with a kind of a ventilator and the model they have prepared, they have shown something and it is ready for absorption. So they are actually talking with certain company in Bangalore to make sure that it you know, gets produced. So that's where the stage is. Uh, next one. Now, this is something that even we were not aware, actually our students, no matter where they are, you know, because they are not here in our campus, they themselves are trying. I think just two days ago, it came out in the paper that one of our design student, master student, in uh, Kashmir. So he has come up with something called Rudhar, which is uh, a good a ventilator design apparatus. it's being claimed, and it maintains a lot of these vital parameters that is required for a good ventilator. And it is claimed that the cost for a prototype was less than 10,000 rupees. So that's also a very interesting thing that some of our students are doing on their own. Next one. Okay, now, uh, what happens is that in India and many others, today I was reading in the paper that actually in Mumbai, since we are really a hotspot, the amount of biomedical waste has gone up like the roof. There's like, they are thinking of how to actually get rid of this biomedical waste. This is also a health hazard. So can we design something like a wash resistance, antiviral coating and tech, you know, some textiles or other materials so that they can be reused. So we actually, this is done by Professor Dinti Banerjee and her group, and they can actually find out that any PPE that you make out of this after this coating, they can actually last several, even after 20 such coatings, I mean, washes, they still retain the antiviral properties. So this is for a regular textile, but also if you know, I think if you, Ashok, if you could go to the next one, so by the way, these are all actually ready for you know, productionized. So if all we need, they are talking out with certain companies to see whether they can do that. See, one of the other thing is like, um, you know, how to actually handle certain, uh, you know, you, the waste, but at the same time, you want to be environment friendly because today I myself went to check what's happening in our hospital and I found that on the top of that, you have a plastic seal, which is very quick and it's cheap, but it, it's not environmental friendly. So actually we have come up with something called biodegradable antiviral plastic faces. So it is actually kind of a plastic, but it's fully biodegradable and using proper bio, you know, your polymer composites, they could do it. And again, it has shown good properties. They're looking at certain um, industry partners so that they can be, you know, productionized. Next one. Okay, now uh, somebody asked on IoT and others, I think the previous lead Professor Rao, so here is another interesting thing. There is an app which is available in Google Play Store, if you go, it's called Quarantine, okay? So this is uh, to be done, you have, if somebody is suspected to be quarantined, you know, he's a quarantine, it has to be registered by, let's say the corporations or the state authorities, and they have to keep their GPS and other on. So it is to track those people, whether they are violating, so they could be geofenced and the alert generation. So if something they are violating it, because you know initially there are a lot of such complaint, people with their stamps, you know, they go out and then you know they are not found to be in their place where they are supposed to be quarantined. So this is it has been done and it has already it is being used in Odisha and Meghalaya. And Niti Aayog is also involved with this. Deloitte is the industry partner. They are also helping. And today we have at least two states we know that they are working, you know, using it. Okay, so other states are also most welcome to do it. Next, please. Now, you know, if you notice that uh, hospitals, when you go, people are scared to go uh, because uh, you don't want to get uh, to somebody who is in, uh, you know, is possibly a COVID patient or uh, you know whether asymptomatic or not so what uh, at the same time the doctors also don't want you to come unless you really have something serious but there are people who are suffering so what do you do so we have a system of online opd actually so our some of our faculty members in computer science they have developed an online opd where you leave a message it's a whatsapp based 
and you leave it there a message a doctor would call back on the whatsapp will they will talk to you and they will actually send you the prescription if they want to see you through the pictures all they can do and this is now being used in kem hospital in mumbai is a big hospital those who know okila ben hospital and even in our own iit hospital this is actually being used okay so that you don't have to come to the campus at all if you are so wherever you are be safe and we'll provide you the support next one now there are some other i think people asked like this that like epidemiological uh, prediction modeling we were doing it okay uh, not been very successful but you know some of the numbers are you know depends on lot of conditions how good are all these model parameters but uh, i think with our colleagues along with jncsr i think they are also actually predicting at different places like it's in mumbai or bangalore or you can give some uh, district what would be the requirement for various kind of you know health equipment you know you need beds you know, how many cpap or ventilators so they are actually predicting the requirement also so this is online anybody can use it you know uh, the third one is very interesting this is like you know one of the very highly mathematics oriented so we have we did not have enough testing kits so what you said that you can mix you know many such people uh, blood and you can have one test then you remix in a different proportion in others and by doing maybe let's say 10% of uh, overall test in terms of the numbers but you can actually pinpoint who is the person who is actually affected with certain probability so it is not like you know what they do is a pool test right now means different means you first find out whether this group somebody is suffering then they go within that group so it's a different it's a uh, using called sparse sampling techniques then another one few kids on their own they have done something like demand and supply matching of uh, Uh, different things i have certain let's say pp uh, and somebody needs it in some place so i put it up on the web the other guy you know they say okay this is where i need so they can do this the matchmaking so this is at the time when you are in urgency you needed that lot more and people are using it that okay they say i need somebody could even say that i need 500 let's say your mask and somebody says oh, i have 500 mask close to this particular geo location so they can talk to each other now we go into the next one uh, which is the second part on the curative part of it as i said so this is a long term plan so some of the things that we have started doing so i can go to the next one please so uh, there are several projects i think i just took only few of them which may be relevant uh, the first one uh, talks about actually coming out with some kind of a gel which you can put it in, uh, close to your nose and if you you know inhale it so it goes inside your all the your in, you know like a trachea and others and that is supposed to actually kill the virus because most of them are sitting there so this is some antibody based capture and they they it's being done and uh, they are getting initially good results but still it takes time the other one is actually to find out what is the biomarker inside because that would be useful tomorrow so they are working with certain doctors and coming up with certain kind of biomarkers so this is also you know for positive and negative things how do they change all this being studied next one please okay the other one is that you know initially there have been claims that you put certain prophylactics to help the immunity and others so here is a antivirals very specific kind of prophylactics which has been also designed and actually they got certain approvals also so now this can actually be given to the people to uh, you know boost up your immunity against uh, viral uh, attacks and the last one i think i should quote is that uh, it's um, those people who have like this respiratory distress it doesn't have to be covid but anything which has like sars and others where respiration is a big problem so it's a kind of a uh, aerosol technique that they spray which actually gives little bit of a palliative i would say support to those patients so that they don't feel uh, as breathless as they should, you know otherwise they would have been done i think i'm taking my time i think that's probably the last one i think um, but if you have anybody has any questions others our dean rnd is actually we have a covid related um, special task force one is for actually physically maintaining the campus where the deputy director is a head and the other is on the research so dean rnd can actually 
is maintaining that. So thank you. I think I'll be happy to take any questions. Thanks, Oshin. <laughs> Lots of questions have come. And in general, uh, if uh, for the participants, if your question is not answered because the number is so large, please feel free to write to the respective IIT and uh, they will uh, you will get a response, I'm sure. Um, so let me ask a few questions. It's a little basic question. How easy is it to get COVID-19 sample for testing? Is it Okay, so number one, we were told that even if it is easy to get, you should not go there, okay? Because it's very, very contagious. So right. you need a very special kind of chambers, like at least BSL-3 and also certain certifications. So uh, normally we would not encourage anybody to do it unless you have a very special protection gears and others, okay? So all uh, these people, they are looking at getting only the RNA samples so that, okay. you know, otherwise we have so many students and others, right? Uh, you know, it's very risky. So it should be done only with NIV and other, you know, people, ICMR uh, guidelines to be strictly followed. So I would say that some specialists should answer that question. Okay. Uh, can we use the current research uh, on COVID in general uh, and be prepared for another virus which may come three years from now? <laughs> Uh, is this a, an opportunity for us to uh, develop the larger research? That's the question again. So, see, what happens if you look at professors, you know, you have been professors all through a life. If, you know, if we use your driving as a Google map and suddenly we find that the road is closed, we simply take left or right and see if there is any other way, you know, we start exploring. So right now we are in that mode. So what happens is that our people get trained during this process, as Ram Gopal said. And hopefully we are better prepared because the last major one I was told in like, you know, 100 years ago, like something of similar thing. So hopefully we are better prepared and we know how to handle it. We may not have the exact solution, but we know how to handle it. And maybe tweaking a current kind of uh, thing, we can just very quickly get a vaccine or, uh, you know, antidote. Okay. What is the, can you comment on the quality of ventilators? Are they as good as what is available now? Are they cheaper, better? So it is like, cheaper oh. for sure, but uh, better we have to check because uh, see the key thing uh, is that, uh, you know, there, these parameters are very, very critical. And the second thing is that, you know, not only that you have to put them in a negative chamber, you know, pressure chamber. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise what happens, your ventilator design is very critical in the sense that if you are um, not putting them in a regular room and if there is a small leakage, actually you are jeopardizing everybody else's health. Yeah. So the entire ambience has to be prepared. So it's not only the ventilator, the, even the leakage, the pressure monitoring. So mm -hmm. before it does, so ICMR is the protocol is very strict. They have the numbers. I don't know the exact numbers, but I think the experts should know. So that is more important than probably saving a little bit of money, I would say. In the long run, otherwise we end up damaging quite a lot. All right. So I'll add my question to this. Along with the ventilator, there's also talk about uh, oxygenators. Uh, are they, are, are you looking at both together or in tandem or something like that? See, they, oh, normally is like, a, you know, typically oxygen, you know, these are like a CPAP and other CPTs like that's easy to do it. The ventilator is the key aspects because I think what makes it very complicated is actually also the negative pressure that you have to put in mm -hmm. there, chamber. So together, so right now we are looking at just getting a proper design with that follows all the parameters so mm -hmm. that tomorrow the actually we can place it somewhere and do the proper testing. So right now we must say that we are not there. See, I know that our student has designed something, but uh, you know, which has come out in the paper, Rudar. But frankly speaking, I don't have the details to say whether how good or how safe it is. Okay. Um, one last question: What is uh, as we go forward, uh, um, uh, safety of industrial workers? Is there any? Uh, because that is where a lot of people come together, and so on. Large numbers are there. Is See, there actually. This is something very interesting because uh, certain areas, okay, uh, we can have social distancing maintained, okay, particularly, you know, if you look at certain things which are in the software industry, it's possible, okay, so they are already talking about cutting down the, your office presence by 80% or 70%.
but there are certain things where you have to have people okay and industry in certain case manufacturing industry you have to be extremely careful that you place them properly and there is no contamination so we have to have a new way of making sure that our work side is uh, good okay so that it is safe right. but i think i would add one level beyond that see our workspace may be safer in future but our living space is probably not in big cities like mumbai if you see in dharabi and others you know 8 lakh people in a small area there is no place for them to do social distancing and yeah. that's why th this is so bad so i am probably more optimistic about the workspace rather than the physical space that we live in i think Okay, thank you so much. Uh, uh, there will be some uh, time at the end also. So sure. over to Professor Sitaram of IIT, Director of IIT Guwahati. And uh, if I may mention, it's the youngest of the, what we call first generation IITs. Uh, they just completed 25 years. Over to you. You have to unmute. You have to unmute. Now, yes. uh, are yes. you able to hear me? Okay, once again, I'll just uh, make my slides also coming. Yeah. Go Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you, IIT Alumni Bangalore Center. Um, IIT Guwahati, welcome to IIT Guwahati, which is celebrating its Silver Jubilee this year. And we have to actually cancel even our alumni meet because we closed down our all academic and co-curricular and extracurricular activities on 16th of May. And actually, our, we had scheduled our alumni meet on 20th and also our research conclave on 20th to 22nd. So all of that was cancelled because of the COVID-19. And then immediately on 15th, we created a disaster response team, which has been constituted to look after both the uh, prevention as well as mitigation of COVID-19 related uh, issues in the campus with our deputy director as the chairman and a very big team. And thanks to them, really, you know, our campus is quite far away from the city and to you and, and also most of the scientists and professors are leaving the campus so they are even getting their vegetables and every issue yeah, has to be sorted out and they've done a fantastic job and then we have started online classes already more than 400 courses uh, theory courses are going on online and we have started actually a regular online yoga courses for our students and faculty wherever they are through uh, teams microsoft teams which is going on very well in the morning Every day morning, the, our uh, yoga teachers from the Student Activity Center are actually taking live classes through the uh, Microsoft Teams. And all the necessary steps to uh, basically to maintain the social distancing and uh, strictly maintain the COVID-19 protocols in the campus have been uh, placed. And I have to tell you, I also have to come out of the uh, city um, in IIT Guwahati and I'm right now in Bangalore at my home. So a lot of things have happened since then and what I would like to say particularly to our students, many of them have joined today to this, placements have not been impacted at IIT Guwahati. Only we have seen only one company with the drawing the jobs and the rest of the, all the jobs are intact at, at least as and today. And uh, we have also, our faculty is very generous, faculty and also students, we have actually uh, donated one day salary to the Brain PM Care Fund, and it was more than 35 lakhs of rupees, which is given by the IIT Guwahati uh, towards the this one. Um, so we tackled this uh, uh, COVID-19 from a very different perspective. I have to explain to you that Guwahati Medical College Hospital actually came with a request to me by email, uh, sir, our RT-PCR is not working in our hospital. Can we use your RT-PCR? Immediately, two of our faculty volunteered to donate or give uh, two RT-PCRs. And I'm very happy to tell you today, to all of you, our RT-PCR today has been used to identify
transmitted by all the COVID-19 cases in Assam. All of that is done using IIT Gauhati scientific machine, which is placed in Gauhati Medical College Hospital. Why I say placed? Because uh, we don't have the uh, BSL-3 laboratory to handle these virus. So we are basically given to them and our scientists are not involved. We are only helping them maybe RNA analysis. And that is where, and also in this difficult time, I, we have realized, I have to tell you, seven companies have come forward to set up their offices in IIT uh, in a research park. So we have created actually a new deal for a handling industrial interaction and special initiative of IIT Gowati. And uh, this is a very, very unique uh, time, as Professor Rambopal was highlighting. There is a lot of interest in the industry. And we have recently signed uh, an MOU to bring out the vaccine with the Hester Biosciences. And to, I'm very, very happy to tell you the scientist who is working was actually did a PhD and done a postdoctoral work at the University of Maryland. In Oilavaji lab, he is a veterinary scientist doctor in our BSB, and he has almost completed the uh, recombinant RNA ready for animal testing, which is actually that is where we have signed the Estrobiosciences. Estrobiosciences has not only signed uh, exclusive agreement with us to bring out the vaccine, and they have also established their office in IIT uh, research work which is a very, very good thing for us and which we On the case of the online learning, our EACT Academy, uh, which is funded by the MIT, has done a fantastic job and uh, continues to do a lot of online courses for the both the industry as well as to the university colleges, which is uh, continuously ongoing. More than 200 courses have been developed and uh, run through this uh, EACT Academy, which is already five years old. Uh, center, which is actually inaugurated by the Honorable Prime Minister, uh, Sri Narendra Modi ji. And these are some of the, you know, COVID-related activities. But coming to the research initiatives, I will take you through some of the slides right in front of you, which is shared already. The, I mean, the coronavirus outbreak, uh, our faculty, please remember all the 6,500 students left. Uh, March 16 to 18. So, This is better? Yeah. So okay. what lectures are you going to take for 2020 batch IIT students who lost their jobs and going to and may you know may not get jobs due to the pandemic? Anything you're yeah. doing? Yeah. You see, as I told you, at IIT Guwahati, only one company has withdrawn right now for only two students. So far, there is no withdrawals of the job offers at IIT Guwahati. But we are ready with uh, even another round of interviews in the middle of maybe June, July for the people who lost their jobs. And But at the same time, I would like to tell you, there are some companies who came forward to offer the jobs for the people who have lost their jobs. And I have done is I have actually written to every company personal letter from the director's uh, office to mm. say that this is a very difficult time Please, whatever the offers you have made, don't withdraw. This is what I have done. And we are already working with our uh, CCD coordinator to talking to the industry, so who are uh, ready to offer the jobs for the people who are not, who, who are gonna lose, if they are gonna lose a job. But right now, luckily, only uh, two or three students from one company have lost their jobs. So that's the good news about it. And we have also, I would like to add here, I will, we have also started, online um, uh, internships for the students. That's also very uh, successful. Many, many companies have come forward to offer internship sitting at home and they have shared their uh, files and data and uh, our, our students are working from home uh, on the internship as well online. Yeah, uh, one question is about antimicrobial uh, coatings and vaccine, are there any side effects, or, and are you considering those side effects? Is there any uh, yeah, I, I think, uh, I mean, I'm not the right person to answer that question oh, because uh, it's a more of a science-based question you asked to ask me. But anyway, so I've discussed with the- Yeah, that's right, this that's is, the question, okay. Yeah, this is the, I discussed with the innovator, that is the professor uh, Biman Mandel, and he's the right person to answer that. But anyway, I would I'll just try to tell you. Uh, okay, this is a very you simple, work? Yeah. 
there are five companies have already come forward to use this technology and it is not uh, i don't think it, it is any then uh, just it's because it's going to stick to the uh, ppe kit and they, they have demonstrated it and they were using in hand so these scientists uh, are using themselves in hand without any gears that clearly shows that it is not it is quite safe yeah so i think last question i'll take uh, is that uh, uh, i i think this person is maybe from another institute uh, does iit guwahati want to work collaboratively with Uh, collaboratively with the nearby institutions to fight the covid-19 pandemic together are you open to working with institutions in your area basically that's the question yeah, yeah. you see uh, as, as soon as i joined in the last july we have actually tied up with northeastern institutions all of them okay whether it is the private institutions or a government institutions or even nits because we are the only iit in the eighth eight districts sorry eight states of the northeast including sikkim seven sister states and sikkim so we are the only one iit so we have taken up to reach out to the northeast and we had actually a conclave of all the directors of nits eight nit directors we had at iit guwahati and we offered them that you know we will would like to work with them jointly and as i as i told you our eict academy has already set up the nk network in these nits we are working and we are also working with the government institutions in guwahati guwahati medical uh, schools and medical hospitals around guwahati city they are closely working so iit guwahati is making all efforts okay. to reach out to the institutions in the northeast perfect excellent you can be a lead leader okay thank you so much uh, professor sitaram over to professor sadid das thank you director of iit roper Hello. Yes. Hello. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. You can start with your share screen. Uh, I will come first. I would like to speak for a minute, and then I'll come to share yes. screen. Okay. So um, you know, uh, last but not the least, IIT Roper. See, all of you have uh, gone through. You know, some of the books of Chetan Bhagat, right? He started with five point something. then went to two states then went to one night and then went to half a girlfriend so every time you see it is becoming half from five to two to you know one to half so i think the iit experience the way the uh, we are following is also going exactly same way you see the first two iits have 50 plus years of experience the next one guwahati is 25 years and then comes roper it is 12 years just half and half but you know we are the youngest and that is actually is exciting thing for iit roper because we have got a lot of young people and these uh, young people young faculty members are getting so excited that things are happening at iit roper and i will come in a minute but before that let me tell you the point that professor ram gopal rao uh, brought out which is uh, that new way of learning in fact what we are offering we are not just we have uh, loaded 2000 more lectures but we are giving different platforms to different uh, faculty members so that in the future how we can use these different platforms for different kind of courses interactions that will be tested now in fact what professor rao said is very you know relevant we may have a model in which people will take up some credits from iit bombay some credits from iit delhi some credits from iit roper and then the he will demand that i have got all the credits give me a degree and that may be possible in the days to come we on 21st of may we are you know launching an ai based program with a university in uh, taiwan a uh, carlton university in um, canada and a company in hyderabad iit roper is launching a program certificate course in ai and machine learning so this is what is going through in the newer iits also and this is really exciting probably the whole picture of you know education may change now i would like to share the works which are being done see on immediately after let's go to the beginning
Yes. Immediately after this uh, crisis, the faculty members themselves made a WhatsApp group. And they decided what are the things they can work on. I mean, there was nothing from my side. And 25 groups, and you please understand, in a small new IIT with 170 odd faculty members, 25 groups started working on different uh, technologies. And the most important thing that I would like to share is the point that you know, we are not just working on those technologies or making designs. For everything after design, they are making prototype, they are looking at technology readiness, and not only that, they are working with hospitals, health centers, and implementing all of them. And you will see that in a minute uh, from different technologies that we are working. So this is one thing which uh, previously shown. It is AmbuBag based uh, uh, system of uh, ventilation. This is very important for ambulances where patients are to be transported for one hour, two hour. It's very good. And they made an automated system in which in an ambulance at the same time two patients can be transported and the same machine can ventilate them. And they have also put sophisticated electronics in terms of sensing, etc., which can automatically control this one, uh, the whole uh, system of ventilation. We are now implementing it in two ambulances right now. This is the electronics of that. It is sensing also oxygen saturation and all that. Now, then the next thing was a very simple thing. You see, these days you bring uh, vegetables, you bring everything, and then you need to sanitize them because you don't know what is coming with that. Now, this is a simple trunk. And in the literature, it is there that the UV light of a particular frequency can kill coronaviruses coronaviruses in general. And so the, it was fitted with that particular you know, uh, uh, lamp, which if you keep it for 20 minutes, with, with, uh, you can see one um, uh, reflector is there, aluminum reflector. And this one, if you keep 20 minutes, it's not just vegetables and food items, even your uh, you know, wallet, you can keep it there. The things which you cannot wash, you can keep it there, keep it for 20 minutes and it will be completely disinfected. Now, the interesting thing is, we ju just not made it. The uh, DGP of Karnal, he phoned us when he came to know. He said, can we use it? And we gave them the technology how to make it. They themselves assembled it, made it, and in 70 police station of the Karnal division, this is now being used for all police people who are going to you know, COVID-affected places and coming back, and they are sanitizing this. And Punjab government has recently taken it from us. The next one is very important. We call it Medi Sarathi. You see, two types of system. One is drone system, and the other one is RC trolley system, by which medicine and food can be delivered to the COVID ward. You know, we have in, in uh, Chandigarh, the PGI, which is one of the topmost hospitals, has designated COVID hospital. And one of the wings is a COVID wing, in which it is very difficult for people to go because you know uh, you will be in pp and all that even after that there are infections so you know our people are working and with the with the pgi people and we have built this uh, drone system and this delivery system and this is going to the covid ward in fact this has been tested and in pgi this is going to be from next week onwards we are going to deploy these kinds of things so that's what i'm saying that we are not just you know, designing, we are building, and we are working with the doctors in the hospitals to deliver the whole thing. So this is the thing that we call Medisarathi, two of them. One is for, you know, the ground-based system, another is the drone-based system, which is going to the COVID part with a pre-programmed path and going there and delivering the things. The next one that I want to uh, show is a very interesting thing. That you know, you have seen that we are doing screening by putting the gun type of thermometer. Now, thermometer, just by seeing temperature, you can actually understand nothing. If a person has got a temperature, it doesn't mean it's from COVID. So, this is an intelligent system, infrared based, where various you know symptoms of COVID are integrated. That is, you know, the temperature, the you know, breathing, the oxygen level, the fatigueness. Everything is integrated in one system, and then that system is now being tested. That you know, which can scan like in the, in the airport, in, uh, just like we go through metal detector, 
If you can go through this, they can integrate all the things together, use artificial intelligence, and tell this is likely a COVID patient. So this is one which is developed by Dr. Ravi Babu. The other thing is this, uh, this box. This is now being utilized in you know, General Hospital Ludhiana, Government Hospital Ludhiana, where the aerosol uh, elements of the patients actually gets the uh, you know gets in uh, actually works in infecting the, uh, the our health workers and so this is one box which is made it is not just a box it creates a negative pressure so that you know the things cannot go out it can only come in and the greatest part of it is we have tested that the negative pressure is optimal we made it optimal so that the person doesn't feel suffocation or le le loss of oxygen the other one is the next one, which is very important, which is a negative pressure gradient KP. We have designed it and we are building it now in you know, PGI. And we are also building a negative pressure you know, uh, ambulance. Negative pressure means you know, the things cannot go out without filtering, but things uh, air from outside can come in. So as a result of that, infection will not go out. And this is very important for you know, COVID wards. There should be negative pressure there so that the you know, aerosols and the viruses cannot go out. We have made you know, a chamber also, mobile chamber, and this is the concept is that they used it extensively for mobile testing in uh, South Korea. Because South Korea, the testing was so successful because they had mobile units, they went everywhere. And now in these red zones, you see, very, it's very difficult for health workers to go bring it to the lab and then test. So it can be done there if these negative uh, pressure mobile units are there and we are bringing uh, such kind of vehicles. We are building it right now. So this is the negative pressure one. Then you know this mathematical model. No, every day, every channel shows one model. And we found that these models are simple curve fitting. Have anybody done a real, you know, real kind of a research on these models? Our mathematics group has done. And what they have done is a very interesting thing. They are finding is that at what stage the lockdown was done and what is the quality of lockdown? Is the activity 10%, 20% or 30%? The spread depends on that. And how they did it, they took from NASA, this is the nitrogen oxide, uh, nitric oxide that data, which shows how much of vehicle and industry is there. And then they correlated that to the COVID data of nine countries. And then they came out with predictions. They said long-term predictions is not possible, but they, they predicted the cases of China, South Korea, and India. In fact, on 10 days ahead of 15th of April, they predicted 15th of April will be 13,400. It was about 12,900. So what they are able to say that, you know, actually nitric oxide is an indicator of how this will spread. You can, you can predict on the basis of nitro, nitric oxide. The other one is, you know, our computer science of Dr. Puneet Goel. He has put one, uh, uh, what is called bumper meter. He was working beforehand. This is exactly, actually, this one and this uh, Aragya Setu was probably developed in parallel. So Aragya Setu, of course, government uh, sponsored it. So this is being used. But there are certain features in this, you know, because the progression is with days and hence, in Aragya Setu, there is a problem. The problem is you, your contact can be traced only from the time that your app is downloaded. Where you were before that, because 14 days before that, you could be infected. But that is not traceable. But this is a system in which they made such a, you know, a arrangement so that even beforehand, wherever you traveled from your other data, like call data, et cetera, it can be traced. So this is something we are trying to contact with Arab Gosset where we can include this kind of features. The other thing is that the certain conceptualized design, one is again, the, uh, we call it ward bot. See what happens, the health work, direct health workers like doctors and nurses, they have to go to patients. But the problem is with ward boys and others who are not very well trained, even PP is given, you know, they do not appropriately use it and they get infected. So can we use this kind of a robot for delivering food, medicine, et cetera, et cetera? This is a line robot. And in fact, this idea, you know, MHRD, if you know, 
uh, they launched one mega online challenge, Samadhan. And in that, 2,500 entries were there. And this world bot uh, actually was one of the top 10. So we are now building prototype of this one. The other one is another, you know, we had on uh, shoes, antimicrobial, uh, you know, coating kind of a thing. Now what we have done is now our, our uh, people that have changed that from antimicrobial into antiviral and we are testing that one now. This is in testing stage. And the final one that I would like to share you is a doping session. You see, in the hospitals, the greatest problem is when uh, people get infected. Suppose some uh, health worker has gone to a COVID patient with PPE. Now PPE is uh, outside got infected. Now where you leave the PPE, that will be the point from where the infection will start. So we have designed and now we are building this unit in PGI Chandigarh that there is a doping unit where we use three things. One is disinfected, you know, the non-alcoholic disinfectant spray. One is the UV light and then a negative pressure. Everything combined together, we make a doping, doping chamber in which the health worker, after treating the patient, they go to the doping chamber, chamber leave those things, and they get themselves disinfected, and all the articles get dis disinfected, and they come out of that. And nothing can go out of that chamber because of the negative pressure. So we have designed it, and we have got the materials, and we are building it. So I would you know, end by saying that you know, in last 20, 25 days, all these young people who are doing this work, you know, they never ask, sir, we need money. We said, sir, money is fine, but can you arrange a, a curfew pass for me? Can you talk to the deputy commissioner and give me you know, a pass so that I can go to the supplier and bring those things so that I want to be, you know, build it? So I'm, I'm seeing a tremendous synergy develop, and I'm sure this is happening in other IITs as, as well, you know, all the 23 IITs. I think we will be different people. The, one is on education. But another thing is, see, we were known to be very academic kind of researchers. That, you know, we, we do some deep research and publish in a journal and we are happy with that one. Now, COVID has put focus on doing something for the society, bringing a product, giving it to the people, giving it to the industry. And I think that is the greatest opportunity which has come, which IITs have started utilizing and in future, they will be upholding this one. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Professor Das. Uh, a few questions to you. Uh, what is the payload of the Medi Sarathi that you are talking about? Oh, it's a 3 kg, I think. 3 kg, okay. Um, you talked about UV sanitizers. Uh, for Is it uh, is it being tested and tried for COVID-19? Does it work? Yeah. So this is tested for other COVID, uh, other, uh, you know, uh, coronaviruses, but not COVID-19 in specific. But the, the, all other um, um, you know, uh, evidences indicate whatever is in the literature, it should also okay. work for COVID-19. Um, uh, what is the role of robotics in this pandemic? Yeah, I think you know, robotics, see, uh, hospital robotics, we are talking about for a long time. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it has not really come. Nobody felt we, when we were talking, about hospital robotics to say PGI doctors. They said, no, 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 we still have to go personally. You know, we even want to see the patient. Today, that, that has changed. They themselves are asking, can you give us a robotic arm or can you give us a robotic vehicle which can go there? Because okay. everybody understands the danger. Okay, um, one last little technical question. How can nanoparticle technology be used for detecting COVID uh, uh, patients and so on? Okay, nano, you know, nanoparticle, one of the things for almost everyone said it is the nano coating, right? Coating of antiviral coating kind of a thing. The other one is another kind of thing which is there, which is called the super hydrophobic surfaces. The, you make, you know, like the, the lotus leaf, you mm -hmm. make the surfaces such that anything, any droplet which strikes, it falls immediately. It doesn't stick to that one. So that kind of that is another way of repelling your uh, you know, droplets because COVID is known to be a droplet kind of infection. 
So these are the two ways we can do it. And of course, mm -hmm. the, we say that all these uh, surfaces, COVID, COVID viruses, they stay on the surfaces. So if we can you know, coat the surfaces with antiviral coatings, then the chances are less. The, the virus usually it says it says on you know two hours, three hours. It depends on the surface. In fact, what is very interesting, what has been found in COVID, that they stay maximum on plastic surfaces, and minimum on copper surfaces. This is this is found out. So you know our age old everything is coming back. See, doing namaskar in in our homes always you have to keep the you know your shoes outside. And then, uh, you know, before uh, taking food, you wash your hand. And now use uh, copper vessels for drinking water. Everything is coming to be, you know, whatever is our tradition, that are coming to be correct. Good. Now, let me ask you one question since I'm a plastics man. Um, having said this, now that home delivery of things are taking place, everything is coming in plastic. Yes. <laughs> so that's that dangerous. Happen? Okay. That is then one thing I will tell you, sir. I was told by a very interest uh, uh, by a doctor that one of the worst thing that in these institutes we do, we buy new uh, you know new uh, furniture, and new furniture is packed in plastics. At home also we do, and we think you know it's still new. We, I will not unpack it. I'll keep the plastic cover still. That's the most dangerous thing. Yes. Can I bring a joke here? Can I make a joke here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so uh, all I say that, you know, if it is rather coated with uh, gold or silver, I would rather keep the wrapping and throw away what I ordered. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, I would like to also say something, Professor <laughs> Mishra. IIT yeah. Gohati has actually developed a bioplastic, which is degradable okay. in a normal temperature within six months. You know, Professor Katia, who has developed yes. and uh, it's already in a scale which is scalable. See, we can manufacture that. So we are actually working with NRL to make that in several tons. You know, that's what I would like to share that information. All right. Thank you, Professor Das. Now I have a few questions which uh, which were actually of a general variety, so I didn't uh, ask individually. Uh, uh, and I'll you know I'll just pose it to somebody, a particular director, and they can answer. Uh, are IIT alumni associations collaborating for fundraising for COVID-related projects? Maybe Ram Gopal, you can. Or and do they have a role, or do you wish to? I think IIT alumni, they, they, many of them are coming forward. In fact, there is a Pan IIT alumni has started major initiatives for uh, for for uh, for alumni networking for from the COVID point of view. There is a lot of work that is happening. In fact, I just now saw a picture that they have launched a bus. The bus will go all over and then start more tests and that. I also okay. offered them a daily test kit for that. I think there is a, a bit of a networking happening among alumni uh, to contribute to the area. Oh, very good. Good to know. Um, uh, so, Vashish, you can answer uh, this question. Will the funding for COVID affect the funding for other projects? Because now there is you know, at one time there's nano, if all the funding was going for nano, is this uh, going to be like that? See, you, you know, uh, this definitely happens. There would be some little bit of skewing of uh, funding uh, because this is more urgent. But in general, see what happens, so, you know, no matter even nano, I have never been a nano person, I survived. So I think the rest of the people also will survive. I'm sure there will be other sources of funding. All right. Um, how to engage uh, PhD students during the lockdown period? Students, um, uh, can they contribute from home or are they allowed to go to the labs if they are on campus and so on? Maybe. Uh, so for us in IIT Bombay, uh, since it's closed, we are not allowing. But if somebody does something very specific, very urgent, then they have to take a permission. And if they happen to be here or in Mumbai, so they have to move into the campus and they need to take a permission, then only we allow. But though these are because if you need the lab access, but otherwise, if somebody is doing on a computational and others, they can do it from home, and that's what uh, I think the professors are keeping tab of the students. Very good. In Guwahati, how are you managing that? Yeah, we we have also most of the labs are closed. Only only COVID nineteen related research. Some of the faculty they have opened. As I told you, most of our students are not there in the campus. 
only about 50 students are left. So most of the faculty, some of them were in biology and they are keep running their labs. But uh, other things are all closed and they're all working from home. And uh, our workshop was actually kept open for uh, developing some of the robots and other things. You know, uh, That was a very uh, needed thing. Yeah. So we kept it open. Actually, we are we are uh, engaging the research students in different way. For example, we yesterday day before yesterday we had a you know research methodology uh, webinar, uh, and about 400 uh, research scholars from our university, uh, our institution, and another two three hundred people from out other institutions, and we brought even speakers from outside, and uh, research scholars were very excited about that. So. That kind of activities, and even we have started that the research scholars who are ready with their seminars, you know, then doctoral committee meetings, all these are happening over with. Okay. Uh, what would be the long term? Sorry. Just to add, we had our first Senate meeting involving 200 faculty online. In fact, the attendance was better when it was online than we <laughs> in person. So, I think we are thinking now even the regular meetings during the regular times should go online. Yeah. Actually, you know, personally, I think I'm busier than normal in times. So, you know, they're, you know, working a lot more than what I used to earlier. But okay. I found one more thing that the meetings in Delhi, which we have very frequently, you know, we are saving a lot of time and money. Yes. <laughs> See, Delhi means if you think, if, it, if this is a director's meeting, how many directors from how many places they come, you think of the money, you know, and then there is a two hour meeting, right? That's right. And you spend so six you, hours. Each yeah. director spends one day, one complete day. Now it's just two hours and no expenditure. Right. Very good. So um, uh, maybe, Syed, you can answer this question. Um, what would be the long term impact on education uh, in terms of how do you see uh, 2020 batch and so on and so forth? Is it going to affect uh, scheduling of classes and this and that? See, I, uh, let me tell you, in the short term, we are forced to do certain things. For example, today only we have taken a decision that we will we might go for the final year students, the end semester exam online. The examination is online. So yeah. these things we are pushed into. But from this, which may you know, emerge is something which uh, I would put it this way. You see, uh, a very great thinker who passed away just a couple of months back, Clayton Christensen, he was a professor of Harvard. Uh, he was a theory of disruptive innovation, uh, mm -hmm. he, he proposed. Now he said about education, this, this education system of a university in which you come for three years, five years, this kind of a thing is existing for last 500 years. But this is going to be challenged. People will say, why should I you know, read a complete course if I don't need it? I need only a part of it. Why should mm -hmm. I go through a complete program? Why mm -hmm. should I, you know, why should I take a program which is designed by somebody else? Why should not I design my own uh, learning? And okay. this concept will come. And I'm, okay. I'm sure some of these concepts are going to come in future. Okay, Rangabal, I'll ask you one last question. And then I think the time is also... Oh, uh, there's some people have asked that IIT should also work on socially relevant health projects, which would be a multidisciplinary, involving humanities and social sciences, and uh, the bio people and others, and so on and so forth. Um, what do you? How would you respond to that? I agree. We must do that. We are doing it. We can do more. There are lots of. Uh, multidisciplinary projects uh, within IITs. But I think what is missing is this inter-institutional kind of projects aren't many. You know, for example, there, is, there are certain strengths here. There are certain strengths in another institute. We haven't really been trying to you know, that sort of a expertise across the institutions. I think that is probably something we need to do more and more. And uh, at IIT Delhi, I can imagine, you know, at least 200 faculty members working with faculty outside their departments. We have major schemes now to encourage that. Oh, Unfortunately for us, so, so I think within the institute, these things are now happening on a, on a much larger scale compared to, let us say, 10 years ago, when I started at IIT Bombay 10 years ago, having a project where there are 
four or five department faculty involved was was very difficult to even think of everybody was you know within the department within the group but but i think we some of those things happened at iit bombay you know 15 years ago but uh, but now that i can cite many projects happening across the institute so. thank you so much um i think we have run out of time so first of all thanks to all of you professor ram gopal rao professor uh, subhashish uh, choudhary professor sarit das and professor sitaram for taking the time to share what's going on uh, at your respective iits uh, i'm sure very good work is going on in other iits but as uh, ashok kamath said we had to restrict to a reasonable number of uh, uh, panelists so we chose four uh uh we'll uh, of course uh, take this forward uh thank you so much for excellent presentations and um, we will put it on um, uh youtube with you very soon so that others can also see it i would also like to acknowledge uh, uh, the help provided by the respective alumni associations for uh, spreading the news about our webinars and especially the alumni associations of iit delhi Bombay, Guwahati, and Roper, uh, whose directors were present there, so they were very uh, proactive in uh, providing the help. Uh, I think this is the way we will proceed as we move forward. Thank you, and have a good evening. Thank, Thank you, you, everybody. Bye. Namaste. Bye. Namaskar. Namaskar.